the panel analysis of predictive actions. the panels and of course we are we are expecting from these three panels interact with you and uh, have a dynamic input and output for you i would like to have all the speakers here uh, in this panel please i think it's better for managing so esteban and alexander i don't know where is alexander Okay, so uh, let me uh, start to introduce this panel. Okay, uh, as I commented, this is the first panel. We want to comment with you. Uh, we have identified as predictive actions that we can take in the structures in order to move towards a non-maintenance uh, strategy of concrete structures. Uh, in this uh, panel, uh, we have a three presentation of th three minutes in order to give you the frame of the context. And after that, we want to have 15 minutes of discussion with you. So we will present all the uh, continuously. And at the end is the, is the discussion. Uh, first, I will give uh, something related with the structural health monitoring. Then we uh, will have uh, examples of uh, site monitorings of one real structure, and then uh, new materials for cell diagnosis. Okay, um, when we are thinking in uh, structural health monitoring, we decided when we were preparing the framework of this this uh, workshop or networking uh, event, uh, we decided to put this name. And this name is very complex because it uh, represents a lot of work inside and a lot of activity. So uh, I will try to do my best to show you what is behind this health monitoring of co concrete structures. If in reality, we can measure the health of a structure, but we are the main function, so we are expecting from there. Of course, uh, we want to detect any damage, the location of that damage and the moment of appearance and the severity of the damage. Uh, that will meet, it means the evaluation of the health of the, the status of the health of the structures. That should uh, allow us to uh, define or continuously evaluate the uh, service life of the structure that we have predicted at the beginning during the design and of course, we are expecting to have real data collection uh, during the service life of the structure. For that, what we need, we need an implementation in the structure, a smart damage diagnosis system. What that it means, we need to have sensors or elements that will allow us to measure a specific parameter that we consider is of interest for such a structure in such environment. So this responsive parameters for the health monitoring. Of course, we need to collect the data. So we need a unit control to collect and analyze all these databases we are going to collect. And if we are introducing actuators in the structure, what means actuators? That means they, uh, they are able to inform if we need any correction at that moment in the structure. Later on, perhaps we got we can comment more about that. This could give us to move to intelligent structures because they are able to take measures if there is any risk in the structure. Okay, so we need uh, first to, uh, the, to define the, what are the key parameters we should measure in our structure. Of course, we will be interested to measure defects, cracks, the weathering, the weathering effect if we have wind, it's very important for some structures to know how, how is the wind, the severity of the wind, and the structure it takes any uh, measure to reduce the risk due to that wind. But also we have snow, rain, every time more and more. And of course, we can measure dynamic and static deformation loads. For instance, if we are in seismic, 
environmental aggressive uh, uh, parameters like chlorides, carbonation, sulfates, in case it, we, we, we have certain severity for the concrete, temperature, humidity, and concrete damage and reinforcement damage, that means corrosion. How we can perform this, we should perform so no destructive methods because we are moving through a non-maintenance uh, strategy. So we need sensors to measure these parameters. Uh, of course, the sensors could be embedded in the concrete or bonded on the surface. What are the main important criteria that we should look for these sensors? Of course, they should measure a relevant parameter. They should be robust nets because, of course, we are going to embed in the concrete in some cases. We need to monitor. The monitoring length is very important. Is a long-term monitoring or a short-term? Long-term, that means 120 years in, the, in one of the bridges that was uh, commenting to us uh, uh, Pepe previously, Asiana, or um, could be short-term because we want to measure how the hydration is evolving and how the, is increasing the strength in the, in the structure. Or we are going to take measurements periodic or continually by remote, the type of structure, of course, that can condition a lot on the type of monitoring system. We can, the manner of the response, dynamic, static, vibration, that is mainly for strength, for mechanical performance of the structure. Or the resistance to the aggressive environment of that type of sensors, because we are going to expose in frost, in heat, in uh, alkaline, in acid conditions. So all of this we need to take into account when designing this monitoring system. These are only some examples on how is evolving the, the literature with this. There are existing fiber optic sensors to measure mainly strain, but also temperature, humidity, uh, fiber black uh, grating uh, sensors, also to measure strain and temperature, also piezoelectric sensors to measure similar parameters, electrochemical sensors, they are very one, well known to measure corrosion performance, wireless sensors to located <coughs> embedded or, uh, on the surface that it needs to have a, a, a base for collection of the data in, in remote and analyze the data. And finally, we have another group that is the cell sensing concrete. That means that we are looking for the structures be itself a sensor and give us how is the performance. Some examples, for instance, for strength and strength uh, and craft monitoring sensors, this type of sensors that are located close to the the reinforcement to measure the strain of this other, that is a um, fiber optic sensor, also to measure strain. These other micro electromechanical sensors uh, with accelerometers, even GPS, that could, can give us capacity, piezoelectric, piezoresistive, this type of information, or this other with the accelerometer, with capacity of piezoresistivity performance, or the sense in concrete implementing certain type of materials with some cells in intrinsic property. That means that they are, they are able to have a certain reaction when a load is applied on the material, and then we can have this type of uh, um, reactions. We have been working in the Lorthenis project in this, in this topic, trying to, to be able to measure this piezoresistivity resistivity of the, of the concrete. Another type of sensors to measure durability. For instance, there are uh, some advances with the PA change and some sensors may based on certain type of uh, uh, metal oxides. Uh, still, they are starting uh, also for chlorides because, of course, we cannot take continuously uh, cores from the structure and measure the penetration of chlorides. But embed some sensors that are able to be sensitive to the penetration of the chloride. The electrical resistivity is one of the sensors more advanced and already exist in the market. Also the corrosion potential, they are now experienced for more than 20 years with embedded uh, this sensor. I don't know if that is enough for 120 years because when we are using embedded sensors, we need to guarantee that it's a long service life or long, long life inside the concrete. But also we can measure parameters like corrosion potential, corrosion rate, resistivity, 
either coming from the surface with the special equipment to do that, or also having a proof inside the, the, the structure and measure continuously the performance and the corrosion performance, all the parameters, corrosion rate and corrosion potential, through a, a base where it's possible to collect all the data in remote and analyze. We can have examples of this in the other presentations. But as an example, we have a bridge and we can introduce the sensors in some specific points and critical points of the structure and also probably in some cases actuators in order to make corrections in case the, that our structure is under risk. Or in the case, for instance, bridge or buildings where we have uh, problems of durability due to the aggressiveness of this environment, we can measure all these parameters related with durability, pH, chloride, corrosion performance, uh, through, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, with a uh, wireless or, or, or directly measuring on the structure. In any case, we have a database. With this uh, database, we can analyze. We have a ma make an assessment. And of course, we can make a service life prediction continuously. These are only two examples that this is a reality that is coming. This is uh, the last bridge in Spain is uh, 2015, I think, is not 2017, but uh, that is uh, monitoring. It's uh, held monitoring continuously. The first bridge that was monitored was in Canada in 2006. Uh, this is in Spain. It's a new bridge in, Bri in Cadiz. It's a, wi a quite windy place, and of course, is, this is the Mediterranean side, and me between Mediterranean and Atlantic. And this bridge is continuously monitoring. And in case that the wind is too big, too strong, then it's possible to uh, take measures and reduce, the, for instance, the velocity of the cars to avoid uh, any risk for the people that is using the bridge. Or in wind towers that we, we are commenting is an important aspect. Uh, there was a, a seven, in the seven frame program, a project uh, particularly dedicated to this failures in these joints and to, mo to be able to monitor these failures that can appear due to fatigue cracks and vibration. Okay, this is only to show you how structural health monitoring is attracting. Of course, publications are increasing significantly, mainly concentrating in engineering. Of course, the countries that are pushing more on this are the United States and China. Europe is here, but it's France, um, Germany, Italy, Belgium, and uh, of course the European projects are taking into account also this topic in several cases, either in F FP7 and now in H2020. Okay, these are some questions that we come back later on when we show all the presentations. Okay, so please, Dennis.